higher than before I want to love you more than before yeah. I want to worship deeper
It is nice to be here. It is nice to be here. We are here to worship the Lord um, this morning with our voices, with our hearts. Um, Heavenly Father God, we thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you today and we thank you, Heavenly Father God, for your goodness, Lord Jesus Christ, that you chose us, Lord Jesus Christ. And today, Lord Jesus Christ, we also choose to give you our very best worship, my God and my Savior. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Oh God, so love the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal life I shall
It's just the voices. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes will not perish. They shall have eternal life. Father God, we are grateful. We are grateful, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we choose to remember. In case we forget, Lord Jesus Christ, help us remember. We exalt your holy name today, Lord Jesus Christ. about to sing this part of the song I am reminded of um, 
the word of God where there was this woman who's been suffering for quite some time. He's been bleeding. And the Bible says he, he, she crawled across the crowd just to touch the hem of his, of his garment. I want us today to let everything aside and just crawl and go to the Father and be grateful and thankful for what he has done today. I don't know what is standing on your way today, but I want you to crawl and go and touch the hem of his garment and just thank God for his goodness and continue to have hope in him. Amen. You've been so, so good to me. shared a thought with us at the leaders gather, gathering about hope and he shared that hope um, is different from faith because faith is its substance and so the Lord gives us a word a specific word and it's like something we can hold on to it's, it's substance um, but hope is different because it's not necessarily about a specific word but hope is about a specific person and you know, as we sang this song and as we remember what Easter talks about, um, is about as we get into it this month, we can remember the specific person, the kind of person that we are hoping in. 
You know, sometimes you're like, I hope my boss will pay me. And that depends on the person that the boss is. I hope my friend will come. And that depends on the person that the friend is. But when we say, I hope in God, the kind of person that he is, is the kind of person who, when we were wrong, 100% wrong, he came and took our place, first of all. That's the kind of person. The kind of person who doesn't come and tell you you're wrong and rub it in your face, but the kind of person who says, you're wrong, but I will take your place. Also, the kind of person who is not afraid of pain and death because, as Revelation tells us, he has the keys to death. He has the keys to the grave, meaning he's above it. And so the kind of person we're hoping in is the kind of person who, even if my situation feels like death, it's not a bother to him. It's not a problem to him. He died and that wasn't a problem for him, he then rose to life again. That's the kind of person we put our hope in. That's why we are remembering what he did so we can continue to hope. So we're going to take some time to pray as a church, and I invite us to engage whatever situation it might be that we are going through. Maybe it's a need that you specifically have or a need that someone else has. Let's pray from a place of hope in the kind of God that we just talked about. The kind of God that I hope you remembered as we were singing this song. The kind of God who we can hope in and he will not let us down. If you have a need, a specific need, I just encourage you to um, put up your hands and tell the Lord you're hoping in him. And even if it's on behalf of someone else, you can do that and let's pray together. Father, you see our hands raised and you see what is in our hearts. You know our situations. And God, you are so good. You are perfect. You are incredible. You are magnificent. Lord, you are kind and merciful. And God, you are powerful and above it all. Above it all, God, you sit enthroned. And so we lift up our hands like little children and we say, Father, we need you. Father, we need you. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us and help us to forgive others. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. We cry out to you, the one in whom we can hope the one to whom we can look because we know who you are and we thank you father that you hear us we thank you father that when we ask for anything according to your will we know that it will be done for us and it's in jesus name that we pray amen amen to close this time of prayer i just want to share a praise report that we've been sharing with some of you guys for those who were here last Sunday, you heard that um, Pastor Lou wasn't doing well. And it was a very serious situation to the point that his eye couldn't see. It was very sensitive to light. It was very painful. Um, and we didn't know what to do. Um, and we had to put our hope in the Lord. And today, he's sitting here. And there's many details to that, um, and we're continuing to hope for complete healing, but it's an absolute miracle that he's sitting here today and that he's with us in service. And I want you to think about whatever it is for you that God has done that was impossible for you or for someone else, but God has turned it around. And let's pray and give thanks to the Lord for what he has done. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for Lou. God, we thank you that you have touched him, that you guided the doctors, that you guided us, Lord, and that he is where he is today, Father, that his sight is improving, that his body is improving. God, we give you thanks. And Lord, we thank you for all of the things that you're doing in each of our lives in this place, God. I thank you that there are so many testimonies here. And Lord, we choose to be like the one leper who was healed and came back to say thank you. God, we come back and we say thank you for the miracles of provision that we've experienced throughout this week. 
thank you for your presence that has just been with us, that you've just been with us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for the revelations of truth that you have given us as we have read the Bible. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our jobs. Thank you, God, for the gift of life. We thank you for all that you do for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray and everybody say amen, amen. Well, welcome to Liberty Church Manzini. It's good to see you today. Welcome to all the new people that are joining us for the first time. Um, it's nice to see some familiar faces in the house. Welcome to you guys. Um, and it's good to just be gathered this way. Thank you for those who are joining us online. Um, it's good to be together this way this morning. My name is Zinti, and along with my husband, Lou, we're the community pastors here. And on behalf of our founders and also our lead pastors, would like to welcome you to church this morning. Why don't you give yourself a big round of applause? So those who've been around for a while are still standing because, you know, I'm going to ask you to stand again in a minute. Um, and also our Liberty Kids um, who are that side, you guys can stay and then we'll dismiss you guys after we have our child dedication. Today's a special Sunday. We're going to be dedicating some children in the service. So we're excited to do that and would love our kids to be a part of that. But for now, let's take a few minutes, walk around, say hi to someone, meet someone new, share some encouragement, and we'll be back in three minutes. If you're joining us for the first time again just want to say a very special welcome to you please make sure you stop by the table outside that says next steps area would love to appreciate you for coming and also share some information with you on how you can be planted here at liberty church if you don't have a home church already um, like i mentioned we're gonna take some time to have a special moment in our service where we, as a church, together with the parents and the families, dedicate children to the Lord. So please, can you put your hands together as I invite Lou to come up to lead us in this moment. Amen. You know, as I'm standing here, I just want to just uh, stand in agreement with what we've been singing in that song about the goodness of God. Amen. God has been really good to me. Like Zinti was sharing, this past week, uh, not this week, sorry, the previous week, I was unwell, and it was more pain than I've ever experienced, but it's also more hoping in God than I've ever experienced. And when we talk about hoping in God, I feel like I have the experience of knowing that God is the only one who can sustain us by going through this. So to the measure with which I've experienced grief, I feel like God has also given me gladness. Amen. 
Praise God. And thank you, everybody, for your prayers. I'm continuing to believe for full healing, like Zintia said. But even today, I can say, he's been so good. Amen. And I'm delighted to be dedicating babies. Uh, we know we do this uh, because it is something that the Lord has modeled to us. So as I start, I want to begin by inviting the families who are dedicating their children. I'm just going to ask them to come and stand. The stage is nice and long, so they're going to pick which part they like. I'll just keep a corner for myself. And as they come, let's just give them a round of applause. Come parents, come families, come right there. The stage is all yours. The children already want to be on the stage, so it's not difficult for them. This is what they've been hoping for all day. It's finally happening. Awesome. And as we are doing this, children are actually watching this on the side uh, in the next room because we really believe that this is something that builds faith in us. So what I'm going to do as I do this dedication is first I'm going to talk to us about what baby dedication is. And then I'm going to talk to us about how we're going to do the baby dedication. And I'm going to address the children. I'm going to address the parents. I'm going to address the relatives. How many of us know that relatives are involved in the raising of children? Huh? Have you ever told your child, no ice cream, and then they go to grandpa's house, and what do they eat at grandpa's house? So we will also have to talk to the relatives today. Amen. I have to say, I'm possibly one of those who is guilty because when Alice comes to me, she gets whatever she wants. And then finally, we're also going to talk to the church. But as we begin, let us pray. Father, as we dedicate the children, first of all, we dedicate ourselves to you. I thank you that you have been so good to us and that children are a blessing that you give. They are your children. They are given and entrusted to us for a season for the sake of your purposes. So I pray today that as we dedicate these children, you would lead us in leading them to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So let's start with a scripture. Luke chapter 2, verse 22. The Bible says, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem and they presented him to the Lord. Mary and Joseph, when the time was right, they took Jesus and they presented him to the Lord. What is baby dedication? Baby dedication, first of all, is an acknowledgement. It's an acknowledgement because as we are dedicating our children, we are showing that we recognize that our children are a gift from God. Amen. Every time you receive a, a gift from someone, there's an acknowledgement that you can make to them. You don't say thank you unless you have received something. Amen. And so it's an acknowledgement. It also is an acknowledgement showing that we recognize the need for God's grace if we are to raise these children his way. Baby dedication is also a promise. Baby dedication is a wonderful moment in which parents make a public statement of faith to raise their children under God's grace and wisdom. Amen. And then finally, baby dedication is also an invitation. That's why we're doing it in church, right? We won't just do it under a tree. We won't just do it in the living room. We do it in church because it's an invitation by dedicating these children to God in Liberty Church Manzini. These parents, excuse me, 
these parents are inviting the Liberty Church Manzini family to participate in raising these children God's way. Amen. These parents are saying, we cannot do it on our own. Elders, would you come along the way? They are saying, team leaders, captains, when you see Sese beginning to do what is not according to God's way, would you help us out? So, baby dedication is an invitation to the relatives, is an invitation to the church. Let's do this together. And you can already see that Sese needs more than just the parents to be kept in check, right? Awesome. So, in light of this, we will dedicate the children to God today by giving a blessing and a commendation to four different groups of people. The child, the parent, the relatives, and the family. Amen. So I'm going to step down for a moment because first of all, I'm going to talk to the children. I know that they can hear me. Don't be fooled. Regardless of how they are behaving, they can hear me. So to the three children that we are dedicating, this is my blessing and my commendation to you. May you grow in your relationship with God and receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior in God's time. May you obey God's commands and influence others to do the same. May your dreams be fulfilled as you follow the path that God ordained for you before the foundation of the world. May you be faithful to the Lord until the end, returning to your creator as an overcomer when your days on this earth come to an end. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the children a round of applause. Then my second commendation and my second blessing is to the parents. So I'm going to keep focusing this side is now I am talking to the parents. And this is what I would love to say to the parents. May you excel in finding the balance to not exasperate your children, but instead to bring them up in Christian ways, ways that are pleasing to God. May you excel in that. May you excel in being the pastors of your home. May you excel in your responsibility to support your children by providing for their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs as long as they are under your care. That as long as they are under your care, you will be a faithful provider. May you excel in disciplining and discipling them as you are guided by the love, wisdom, and mercy of God that is available to you through Jesus Christ. May you be a standard that when they follow, they follow Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the parents a round of applause. And parents, we would also like to honor you for giving us the privilege of dedicating these children. This is something that is a blessing for us to do as pastors. And now, we are now going to turn to the relatives in the church to help us with this dedication because we acknowledge that it's not something that you can do by yourself. Amen. So I'm not sure if there are any relatives in their house, but if they are there, I would love to talk to relatives this morning. And I would love to also give a blessing and a commendation. You know, we talk about a commendation, it's like a charge. Some churches will say charge, but it's a responsibility. It's something for us to take seriously because if we don't do it, there is a gap that other people may try and feel, but they, know they may not be able to do it as well as we have been called to. So if you're in the house and you are a biological relative to Sisegelo Mazibugo, to Nayezwi Nuto, 
or to Kaelihe Mziniso. I would love to speak to you. And this is my commendation. This is my blessing to you. May you be a godly and reliable help to the parents as they bring up these children in God's ways. May you be a godly example to this child. May you show them by your personal example what it means to be godly, what it means to escape worldly things and sinful living such as immoral behavior and to pursue righteous living together with all of God's people. And finally, may God use you to help mold this child into a God-fearing, responsible adult who contributes meaningfully to the society. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Then finally, our commendation and our blessing is to the church, to all of God's people. God designed the church in such a way that the church is actually a body. The church is a family. And so to live at the church manzini, this is what I would love to say. May the Liberty Church Manzini family assist these parents in teaching these children about God, both inside the church and wherever else we interact with this child. May we provide these children with their spiritual needs so that they would grow spiritually until they fully resemble Christ. May the leaders of this church excel in overseeing both the parents and the children in their spiritual walk. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And then finally, we're going to take a moment to pray. And to help me with the prayers, I'm going to invite the elders. We have our elders in the front here. And I'm going to ask them to stand with each family and as they do as a church may we please just stretch out our hands to these children as we dedicate them as the as the elders are laying hands on the children let's begin now to just pray for the children we have Sisegelo we have Nayazwi and we have Kailich I'm not sure who has made an impression on you as we have been dedicating them right now. But why don't you take a moment to pray, intercede as we are laying hands on these children that they would grow in God's ways. And then I'll conclude for us in prayer and hand over to the preacher for this morning. Let us all pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that children are a gift from you. Lord, as we have dedicated these children to you, we pray, Lord, that they will grow up knowing you, 
following you and that as they come to the right stage in their life, Lord, they will personally give their life to Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the gift that these children are to their parents, the gift that they are to their relatives, the gift that they are to us as the church family. We just commit them to you and we say thank you, Lord. We know that you have got good plans for them, plans to prosper them, not harm them, plans to give them hope and the future. And in all this, Lord, we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a round of applause. You know, as we, as we round off, I just want to share my testimony. Because um, when I was 14 years old, both my parents left and they went to the UK. And because of their status in the UK, they were not able to come back. So I didn't see my mother or my father for 14 years. But one year before they left, I had given my life to Jesus Christ. And the church became my mother. And the church became my father. And I'm speaking to us this morning as we dedicate these children, that the Lord has given these children not just one or two parents. The Lord has given these children this whole family. So let's participate together, not only with these ones, but with many others. We are a family. And I, I thought I would share that testimony because ever since I was 14, people would be like, where are your parents? And I would tell them where my parents are, but then I would also help them realize I actually don't feel like an orphan because the moment I went into the church, I became a part of a family. And so as we are dedicating these three, we are reminding ourselves that as a church, we're not just an organization. We don't just have meetings. Thank God for the meetings. Thank God for the music. We praise God for all of these things. But at our core, what we are is a family. And I'd love to invite us to be that, especially to these three that we have dedicated today. May the Lord bless you. Amen. I'll hand over to Spongy. Amen, Bazalwan. Uti Pastor Lugute in Tanzan, and I feel the same. Uh, I'm also having a parent here. Amen. Amen, Bazalwan. So there is no one who is an orphan because we are all, all here. And when I look at how we are, how God asks us to take care of the kids, I say whether you are parents, whether you are grandparents, whether you are a just a guidance, but the fact is God has trusted you that you will take care of that kid. Amen. And if, um, if there is something that you feel like it's, uh, it's, it's more than you can carry, but God is there to help you. Because God gave you that kid, and he's the only one who can help you. So if there is anything that you feel like you cannot do on your own, God is there. Amen. So, uh, I'm here to introduce our speaker for today. That is my mom. I have a mom. I'm sorry to say that. I have a mom. So I'm here to introduce Maggie Chasusa, who's going to lead us with the word of God. Amen. church and welcome to everyone participating on Facebook and other social media platforms. We are so thankful to God for making it possible for us to come together to worship him and to hear from him and to do everything that we have done, you know, dedicating these precious children, acknowledging that we are all going to help the parents to love and bring up these children in the way they should go. Thank you, praise and worship team, for the victorious songs reminding us of the love of God and helping us to just know um, that we must not, never lose hope. And um, thank you, my daughter, Sbongile, for that introduction. What a blessing to be mom to wonderful 
young men and women at um, Liberty Church Manzini. Um, uh, I'm, my name, as already introduced, I'm Maggie Chasusa, one of the elders. I'm so thankful to God, so happy. You know, I just wake up and I say, thank God that I'm part of this wonderful um, family, which is part of the body of Christ. You know, we experience so much love. We learn so much truth. And it's just nice when we gather and fellowship and encourage one another. I'm, I'm thankful uh, for the privilege to share God's word with us today. Um, can we please pray? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for making it possible for us to gather this morning. We thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for your mercies upon us, almighty God. Thank you that when we were 100% wrong, your love did not stop you from coming to dwell upon us and reconcile us to you. Lord Jesus, thank you for the price you paid for taking our place. Today, we humble ourselves before you and we say, almighty God, touch our hearts to be fertile ground so that we receive the word that you have for us with thanksgiving and gladness and that it would bear fruit. Help us to be doers of the word. We are thankful, almighty God, that miracles continue to happen in this place, in our lives, as we trust you, as we hope in you because of your mighty love and power. Heavenly Father, we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory, and we say, have your way in this place, for it is all about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Um, we've been going through a, a number of se series as Libert Church Manzini, and we are in the middle of another series. So I would like us to ask, I would like to ask us this question once again. Have you ever wondered what it would be like, or it would have been like, to have actually met Jesus in person when he walked on the earth, to hear his teachings and see firsthand his miracles? You know. Like I sometimes wonder, you know, like when uh, we've read about the woman who touched his garment, the Samaritan woman who met Jesus at the well. You know, when Jesus called um, Zacchaeus, who, who had climbed on a sycamore tree to see Jesus, and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. Today, I'll be a guest at your home. Sometimes I wonder how it would have been if I was present there and I was watching what was going on. And maybe um, a number of us wonder what it would have been like. So, in this series that we are going through during this time, we are looking at what it means when we have an encounter with our Lord Jesus. And the name of the series is Defining Moments, How Meeting Jesus Leads Us to Radical Life Change. Defining Moments, How Meeting Jesus Leads to Radical Life Change. Now, in this series, each week we are taking a closer look at the different accounts of those in the Gospels who met Jesus and how their encounter with him brought them radical life change. We will discover together how to experience this same transformation available to each of us as we allow Jesus in our daily lives receiving the hope and healing only he can bring. So we're probably not there physically, but we might as well be there now 
because we are meeting Jesus right now in this place. The message title for today is Defining Love. Love meets the teacher of the law. And our primary text is Luke chapter 2, verse 25 to 37. Our Lord Jesus told this parable when an expert in the law questions Jesus about the greatest of commandments. So an expert in the law questions Jesus about the greatest of commandments. Seeking to justify himself, when Jesus' response included, love your neighbor, the man asks, who exactly is my neighbor? A question which I think many of us would have asked. Is it my neighbor on the left, on the right? Is it my neighbor wh whose house is in front or behind? So this um, uh, law expert asks Jesus, who exactly is my neighbor? And his question sets the stage for one of Jesus' most famous stories that centers around an unexpected hero who practiced radical love. Now we are going to look at Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, and this is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Okay, the parable will be displayed so that we can um, read through together as I read it aloud. On one occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your, with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So that is the message Jesus had for the expert of the law. That is the message Jesus has for us today, to do likewise, like the good Samaritan. Many of us have probably heard or read this parable several times or are familiar with the phrase, the good Samaritan. I actually heard this phrase, you know, even before I had actually read this story. You know, people would say things like, oh, no, that was the good Samaritan, or like, I'm going to be the good Samaritan, and I didn't understand where this came from until I came to read and understand um, this parable. And actually, when I read this parable, it was like watching some kind of a thriller. I just wanted to find out what happened to this poor man you know, after he was uh, left half dead. What happened to this man? And when I saw that the Samaritan came and came to his rescue, it was such a relief. I was like, whew, he didn't die and all is well. I didn't think much about the end where Jesus said, go and do likewise. But today, 
Let us take a closer look at this account and we'll discover what true compassion is in action, how it looks like, and how to save others the way Jesus has saved us and overcome common barriers to loving our neighbor. There are several uh, points that our Lord wants us to see. Jesus, in this parable, shows us a love that firstly crosses cultural, racial, and religious divides. You know, in verse 33, verse 33 reads, but a Samaritan, a Samaritan as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. Now, it's important for us here to take note that Samaritans and Jews could somehow be described as maybe enemies would be a strong word, but they didn't really get on. They didn't see each other as friends. They, so when a Samaritan and a Jew met, they didn't expect anything good from each other. They didn't expect kind words, let alone um, kind actions. So a Samaritan in trouble did not expect a Jew to be the one to rescue them. A Jew in trouble did not expect a Samaritan to help them. And even the people looking would understand. They would say, oh, okay, yeah, he just passed by because the one who needed his help was a Samaritan and vice versa. So this Samaritan, um, the best he could have done if he wanted to behave according to the cultural expectation of the day would probably to just look and hope that a Jew pass by and rescue that man. It couldn't be for him. He was a Samaritan. Verse 34, but on the contrary, verse 34 says, he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. Now, this brings us to the second point. Now, we have seen at how this Samaritan, who, according to the cultural and religious divides, should not have felt obliged to help this man. But now, he goes there, and he goes the extra mile, and uses his olive oil and um, his donkey. Now, the second point the Lord wants us to see there is that love helps where there is need. This Samaritan understood that there was a need. It wasn't about the fact that this man was a Jew and the Jews and the Samaritans didn't get along. You know, he could even have thought that if other uh, Jews find me, they might think that I'm the one who planned this because they will not be expecting me to help uh, one of their people. But he realized and this is the point the Lord is showing us, that love helps where there is need. It's not so much about who is in need, but is there a need? Love is going to go ahead and help in that need. There's also a third point that the Lord is teaching us about the kind of love that we are supposed to have. And this love that the Lord is teaching us is that love costs us. It costs us. It costs us our time, and it costs us our resources. From what we see, this Samaritan was on a mission. He was coming from somewhere. He was going somewhere. And if it was like this time, it could have been maybe this businessman who has an appointment and it was going to mean that maybe he's going to miss an opportunity and okay, that person needs my help, but is it my fault? And if I miss that, my children maybe are not going to get the money that they need. There could have been so many reasons, justifiable reasons, but he took his time and he used his resources. In verse 35, we see that it says, the next day, he took out two denarii, you know, maybe it could have been like 2,000 malangani, I don't know, two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. 
the good Samaritan spent all he had, all the money he had. And this was probably money he had other plans for. And maybe he had to postpone some plans, or maybe it could mean that he wasn't going to buy what he needed to buy for his family when he got home. But he spent all he had. That's why he had to say, I'll come and reimburse you for any extra expenses, which means he took out of his wallet everything that he had. So we see that, we also see in verse 35 that love cares for the long-term well-being of others. You see, this a good Samaritan could just have said, I'll just take the man to the inn. I've done my part. And it's up to the innkeeper to see what he can do. If he just, if you take him out before he is well enough, at least I've done my part and that's all I had. But he was thinking that this man should be completely helped. He should get all the help that he needed so that he could be restored and go back to his normal life. That's why he told the innkeeper that he was ready to pay any extra costs, even before he knew exactly what this extra cost is. So we see that the love that Jesus is showing us is a love that firstly crosses cultural, racial, and religious divides. Because Samaritans and Jews were divided not only culturally, they were divided uh, not only racially, but even religiously. So there were all these three divisions between the Samaritan and this man that he helped. Jesus is showing us that help, when we love, we help where there is need, and that love costs. We cannot claim to love, and when it's costing us, we shrink back. That would not be love. Love costs us. It will cost our time, it will cost our resources, it can cost even more than that. Sometimes it could cost our reputation. Also, love cares for the long-term well-being of others. You know, if we say that what the person needs is more than the loaf of bread that we have given him, we shouldn't just ignore that, but do what we can to see that they will, have, they will continue to have that food or whatever is needed. So in, the, in this parable, you know, our Lord is also teaching us what the love for our neighbor should really mean. You know, it means that we should be ready and willing to help others anytime, anyway, like the Good Samaritan. We should be ready, church, wherever we are, here at church or elsewhere, to help meet needs, to help meet the needs of the poor in our communities, in our city. Help to see, uh, to make others see where these needs are and how these needs should be met. Let's open the eyes. Let's open the eyes of our hearts. Let's open the ears of our hearts to see the misery, the sorrow, around us and do whatever we can about it. So we cannot ignore the needs around us if we are walking in love. There is more that our Lord is teaching us. Our love also for our neighbor is not limited only to those that we like or those whom we feel are like us. You know, like some of us, you know, all our relatives would sing our praises of what a good relative we are. Or maybe our friends would say we are the best friend they've ever known, and so on. But our love should not be limited only to those that we like, or who like us, or those whom we feel we are like in one way or another. Maybe we feel we have the same race, the same tribe, the same language, the same country, we have the same political beliefs, uh, what we can call maybe class and religion and so on. You see, 
what Jesus was also showing us is that even as Christians, as children of God, not everyone might be our brother or sister in the faith, but everyone is our neighbor. No, that person you are looking at, maybe you really don't like what you can see is their religion. Maybe they even, they are someone who even look like they don't have a re religion, if there's anything like that. They are still our neighbor. And God wants us, when it comes to them, to behave like this good Samaritan. Martin Luther King Jr. put it this way. The first question which the priest and the Levite asked was, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But the good Samaritan reversed the question. If I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? So whom are we going to be like? Are we going to be those who, the first question is like, what do people think of me if I'm the one who is being seen to go to that kind of place just because I think I can meet a need or to talk to that kind of person? Or are we going to be those who are going to say, if I don't help that person, if I don't go and share Jesus with that person, if I don't help that child to be rescued from that evil, what is going to happen? You know, sometimes we can give, as people, we can give um, uh, things out of obligation or other reasons. You know, sometimes people will give what they don't need. Sometimes they will give because you are in a group of people who are saying, let's do this and give and so on. So sometimes we can give, but we are not giving out of love. But the thing is, when we love, when we love people, we are going to give what is needed. So when we love our neighbor, we are going to be compelled to give what our neighbor needs and we are going to show to that neighbor that we have the love of Jesus in us. When we love, we care about the needy situations in our communi communities. We are generous with what God has blessed with. Is it our time? Is it our skills? Is it our talents? Is it our money? We get involved in the outreaches of the church community. You know, if there is something happening, you know, sometimes we can ask, but we are already so busy as teams, why do we have to go to that community and spend the whole day and do this and that? But that is the love. Just like in the story of the Good Samaritan, the Good Samaritan would have said, well, when I get home, everybody knows that I'm a good uh, person, I help everybody else, and I don't have time, I'm not a, a Jew, but he did not. So let us get involved in the, uh, in the uh, outreaches of our church community. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We sang that in praise and worship today. The greatest act of love the world has ever known was Jesus sacrificing his life on the cross to reconcile us to God. Jesus shows us what real, true love is and invites each of us to experience this love for ourselves. So when Jesus is commanding us to love our neighbor, as ourselves. He has already loved us more than we can ever love. Now, at this moment, you could be sitting here, you could be participating on Facebook and other social media platforms, and you are saying you have not, you are not sure, or you have not ever received this love, or you don't even understand how to receive this love that Jesus Christ has the greatest love that can ever be. So if you are that person, I am speaking to you at this moment. You could be sitting in this place. You could be participating on Facebook. This love 
is there for you, and you don't have to spend another minute or another day without receiving it. And in order to receive this love of Jesus Christ, you know, I will repeat again what John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. The word of God also says that it's not God's will that any should perish. That's why as a church, we are all about having church and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ because God does not want any to perish. That's why we are busy doing outreaches that even those who don't come inside are not going to perish, but they are going to hear the good news and receive salvation. So what you need to do, if you have not yet received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have not yet received this love, is to believe in your heart, as I am speaking. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has forgiven your sins and he is offering you the gift of salvation. And by receiving this gift, you are free from the power of sin in your life. Your sins are forgiven. You receive eternal life. And Jesus Christ walks with you in this life. And you also confess with your mouth. So you believe in your heart. And you confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. Now, to do this, we help you as a church. If you are sitting here, we are all going to close our eyes. And you will raise your hand as a sign of acknowledging to God and to yourself that you are believing in your heart and you are deciding to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are, maybe you are at home and you are participating on Facebook or other forms of social media, you can do the same. God sees you. And we are going to pray together with you as a church and you are going, if you are saying it for the first time, it's the first day, you are receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are saying this from your heart. We are coming alongside you. All of us who are saved now at one time had to do this. So, um, church, uh, as we um, eyes are closed and our heads bowed down, let us pray. Heavenly Father, um, would you repeat so that the, the one who is doing it for the first time would also repeat. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you sent Jesus to die for my sins. Today, I place my faith in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Help me, Lord Jesus. To receive you. Help me, Lord Jesus, to walk with you. Help me, Lord Jesus, to trust you and know that I've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and I'm now in the kingdom of light. And the Holy Spirit is guiding me as I walk in this life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. If you have prayed this prayer for the first time and you've meant it from your heart, if you are sitting here, please visit the prayer table just outside the door. Just when you go out, you see it's written prayer so that the church can walk alongside you as be you begin your new life in Christ. If you are participating on Facebook, please send us a comment so that we can reach out to you. Believe me, if you have given your life um, to Jesus, there is celebration in heaven. There is celebration over one who receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And as a church, we are celebrating with you. And um, church... Let us not forget, as we were reminded today as we sang, that we live in remembrance. Let us not forget God's unconditional love for us. Like we were reminded through prayer, it doesn't matter what season of your life you are going in in terms of maybe challenges or difficulty. Each time we pray, 
God hears our prayers. Let us not lose that hope. Let us not lose the faith and let us pray without ceasing. You could be in a season of celebrating. Maybe you've been praying and you have so much to, celeb to celebrate. Let us not forget to give God the glory and talk about what God has done for us to others so that the glory goes to God and his name is prayed, is praised. Um, I'll just uh, pray once again for all of us uh, to conclude this message that is um, defining moments, um, the lawyer meets uh, love. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us this morning. Help us, Lord, to be doers of your word and live lives that are pleasing to you. We thank you, Lord, for lives that have been saved. We thank you, Lord, for children who have been dedicated to you today. We thank you for the parents who have dedicated themselves to bring up their children in obedience to your word. We thank you for the church family that is going to help the parents and the children. Thank you for your abundant blessings upon us as we walk in your love. Help us, Lord, to see the needs around us, to save and help the hurting, to give, to see others succeed, and to support our local outreach initiatives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Uh, week church. Thank you for the message, Mom. Defining love. So my takeaway from Mom's message is that um, love love requires resources. And right now, as we're about to give uh, to the Lord, of course, we love the Lord, so we have to use our resources to express that love to the Lord. So uh, here at Lipads, we have different ways to give. I believe they'll be on the screen shortly. Yes. Um, you can drop your tithe on that offering box. You also have EFT and mobile money. So if it's your first time here at Liberty, you are not obligated to give, but if you, if Liberty is your home, you know the drill. You just give to the Lord, eat your smile and um, heart full of joy. So there were two guys having a conversation. So both of these guys, they went to church, they served God. Well, I can say spiritually they were at the right position. So one guy says to the other, um, you know, I have a hard time believing that giving tithes and offering is actually showing honor to God. And the other guy is like, well, so you believe that Jesus Christ came here on earth and died for our sins? This other guy is like, yep, I believe that. This other guy continues. So you also believe that um, Jesus Christ, when he came here on earth, he died for three days and he came back to life as if he never died before. This guy is like, yo, I believe that too. This, guy, this other guy continues. So you also believe that there's a place out there which has streets made of gold and angels flying all around. And when we die, we go to that place and that place is called heaven. And this other guy is like, yep, I believe that too. So you ask the last question. So you have a hard time believing that giving tithes and an offering is actually showing honor to God. I think it's a faith issue. Well, this other guy is like, oh, you know, when you put it like that. So as I was just observing this guy's uh, conversation, it occurred to me that um, at times we can also be like this other guy who didn't believe that uh, giving tithes and offering to God is actually showing honor to him. Well, we may not confess with our mouth. I've never said that, and I'm sure you guys have never said that. But when a week or two or a month or two months or more passes by, without us giving our tithes and offering to God, we are actually taking a step back and we are saying, God, I don't believe that giving tithes and offering is actually showing honor to you. So, Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and, the, and your vats will overflow with wine. Well, I'm sure this morning we came here, we worshipped, 
uh, since he led us through prayer, we prayed. Um, we had the message from mom, defining love, it was awesome. But we have to maintain the balance now. If you have faith in God, if you have love for God, you need to, you need to um, use your resources to express this, that love to God. So, uh, I'm sure you guys know this saying that says, actions speak louder than words. And when we give to God, it's not just a physical action, taking out your tithes, your 10% and the offering, but it also requires for you to be filled with love, be, be excited that you're giving to the Father. And in that way, you are moving the Lord's heart. And when you move the Lord's heart, there's something else that happened, which is the second part of this verse, that says, your bonds will be filled with plenty and your vows will overflow with joy. It's not about you, it's about God, but there's benefits in doing that. So this morning, as we give our tithes and offering, let's just open our hearts, let us be filled with joy, and our bonds will be filled with plenty and our vows will overflow. And you might be asking yourself, what are the bonds? And you know, I don't drink wine. What is this verse talking about? Well, it may look like if you are looking for a job and you pay your tithes and offering every now and oh, well, every time, not every now and then, every time. It's highly possible that God, his house will be moved and he will give you that job. Or maybe you were sick like, like, like Pastor Lou. And Pastor Lou has been consistent in giving to the Lord and his heart was filled with joy the whole time he's been giving to God. It's highly possible that he might recover his sight within a short space of time. You may be looking for a job, you may be applying for a scholarship. When you, the, when you move the Lord's heart, anything can happen because God loves us and he sees the love that we show to him. Can we close our eyes as I pray for our offering? Thank you, Lord Father, for everything that you have given us. Thank you, Lord Father, that we all have something in our hands. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that as we bring it to you, Lord, this morning, that we may be consistent in giving to you, that our hearts will be always um, be filled with joy, that we may be excited, and um, that we will be able to move your hearts. This morning, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, to multiply what you have given us. Help us, Lord, um, to move your heart and help us, Lord, to be consistent in giving to you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Can we turn our eyes to the screen as we watch our... Um Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. There is never a wrong time to pray. The Bible tells us that we should be praying during times of sadness or happiness, times of victory or disappointment, or whether we're praying to remember what the Lord has done or to ask for something new. This Wednesday, we'd like to invite everyone to join us for our monthly prayer service here at Liberty Church Manzini at 5.30 p.m. Throughout the day on Wednesday, before we meet here, we'll be fasting together as a church from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We would love everyone to come through and join us as we take time to begin this month of April with prayer, a month where we get to remember the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hope to see you there. Hello, church. My name is Bongile. I'm serving in one of the teams here at Liberty. This upcoming Easter weekend is filled with exciting plans that we would love for you to be part of. We have a special family service on Friday, a fun outreach on a Saturday, and we'll gather together for our service on a Sunday. Make sure you save the date, invite a friend, and be present, and also take time to join us in committing all this to God in prayer. We're looking forward to spending Easter with you. 